This is how you can create simple logo reveal animation in Premiere Pro. Alright, I've already got the logo loaded on the timeline. So now, let's zoom in on the preview screen and try to replicate the look of our logo. First up, grab the ellipse tool to make a circle. Don't forget to hold down the shift key. This keeps it a perfect circle. Next, switch to the selection tool and move that little blue anchor point right to the center of your circle. If needed, tweak its position and scale from the effect controls panel. Now, grab the rectangle tool and create three more shapes. Once again, set the anchor point, this time to the right middle of shape. You can copy and paste the same shape, then adjust the Y position. Add one more shape following the same steps. Before we change the background color of these shapes, let's rearrange the video track layers. With the graphic layer selected, head over to the effect controls panel. If you like, rename your shapes. It'll make it easier to keep track of everything. To change the fill color, Use the eyedropper tool and pick a color sample from our logo. Just click on the shape, highlight it, and repeat the same steps to update the fill color. But we're not done yet. We need those nice rounded corners. Double click on the text layer to open the essential graphics panel. From there, adjust the corner radius of the rectangle shapes. Now, you might not see any changes right away, so let's turn off visibility for video track 2. While it's not necessary to move the circle shape to the bottom, but I'll do it anyway. Close the essential graphics panel to free up some workspace. It's time to animate the shapes. Start by moving the logo layer a few frames forward. Select the text layer and go to the effect controls panel. First, we'll animate the circle. Click the stopwatch next to position and scale to add keyframes. Take these keyframes a few frames forward, and after a few frames, copy and paste the same keyframes. Now, go back to the start and drag the circle to the center. Hold down Ctrl or Command key and drag it until you see the red dotted horizontal and vertical lines. That will create a new keyframe for the position. Drag the last keyframe forward a bit and delete the one in the middle. You can also adjust the first keyframe if needed. Now, let's animate the scale. Start with a value of 0, and after a few frames, set it to 180. Add a third keyframe and set it to 140. It might look smoother if we align the last two keyframes for position and scale. Copy and paste that 140 scale keyframe few frames back. To make the animation smoother, select the last keyframes and set their temporal interpolation to ease in and set ease out for the first scale keyframe. Then, drag the handle of second keyframe to the left. Do the same for second last keyframe, but drag it to the right. Keep an eye on the preview, and if it feels too slow, adjust the spacing between the keyframes. Now, let's move on to animating the next shape. Fast, uncheck the uniform scale option. Click the stopwatch next to horizontal scale, then move playhead to the peak of the curve and scroll back to set the horizontal scale to zero. For a smooth animation, set the first keyframe to ease out. You can expand it to properly control velocity and speed curve. Drag the last keyframe's handle to the left. If it's moving too quickly, increase the gap between the keyframes. Repeat the same process to animate the third shape. And for the fourth shape, we'll animate the vertical scale. Position the playhead at the curve's descent. Now, we'll copy and paste the same circle. Remove the previous keyframes by clicking on the stopwatch icons and add new ones. Set the scale to 80, move a few frames forward, and adjust the circle's X position. Then, revert the scale back to normal. Repeat the same steps for a smooth animation. You can also animate the fill color. Move back a few frames, click the stopwatch next to appearance, and then change the color to orange red at the curve's peak. At the start of the animation, the circle is visible, but to fix that, just set the scale to zero at this frame. Looks much better now. Let's change playhead position. I think this frame works perfectly to reveal the logo. Select the logo layer, head back to the effect controls panel and set a keyframe for opacity. Move the keyframe a few frames forward and drop the opacity to zero. Finally, use the type tool to add some text right after the logo fade in animation. You can adjust the font, size and color as you like and position it to align properly with the logo. Trim the text layer to match the logo's duration. Now select both layers, nest them, and give it a proper name. Create another rectangle shape to cover the entire logo and text. Click on the vector motion section, 
and move this shape to the starting position of the text. With logo layer selected, go to the effects panel and search for track mat key. Apply it with a double click. Back in the effect controls panel, since the rectangle layer is on video track 3, set the mat option to video 3. This will hide the text at the start of the animation. Set a keyframe for the position of the rectangle. Move forward one second and change the X position until the text is fully revealed. Again, repeat the same process to smooth out the animation. Lastly, select the nested layer and keyframe both the position and scale. Move these keyframes back to their initial position and decrease the scale value. If the previous shapes are still visible, trim them down. Scale the nested layer slightly and center it on the preview screen. I'm not going over every detail again because I already explained it earlier in the video. I just want to respect your time. Let's double check if anything's off. We need to move the first two keyframes forward to align them with the video track 3 animation of rectangle shape. You can also enhance the animation with some sound effects to give it a whole new feel. And this is what you'll end up with.